Hi, Belkin. Hopefully you just watched a video explaining to you the difference between warm and cool colors. And just to review, I have a color wheel right here to show you that on our color wheel, everything on this side is a warm color. That includes orange, red, and yellow, those colors that give us that warmth, happiness, sunshine. And on the other side of our color wheel, we have green, blue, and red. These are the colors that make us feel cool or calm. And I have an example of each. I have my warm colored flowers that I love to wear. And I also have a blanket that I found in my home that has the cool colors. I love this quilt. It just makes me feel warm and cozy on a cool day, those cool colors. I wanted to share a story with you about Angus and the colorful day. It's a wonderful story that really illustrates how warm and cool colors work and I hope you enjoy it. So here we have Angus. Angus sleeps in the warmth of the yellow morning sun. The sunshine warms his back and he wakes up. The golden light of the sunshine fills the room. I wonder what adventure I will have today, Angus thinks to himself. He enjoys the warmth of the yellow sun while he gets to his feet and then he begins his morning walk. Still tired, Angus wanders down the street, not sure of where he would like to go. He passes by a tree with bright green leaves and emerald colored bushes. Then Angus sees a spot where he would like to stop. There is a shadow in the grass from a large tree. It looks like the perfect spot to take a break. He lays down in the cool green grass still damp from the morning dew and forgets for a moment about his adventure. The beach. Angus runs to the best spot and starts digging. Angus loves the beach, especially when he gets to dig in the orange colored sand. The beach is warm from the sun and he can feel the heat from the sand. He digs and digs until hot orange sand hurts his paws. After digging holes for a long time, he feels too hot and too tired to dig anymore. Angus knows how to cool himself off. He runs over to the ocean and jumps in. The cold blue water rushes over his body, cooling him off. He swims in the deep blue ocean until he's completely cooled down. As Angus steps out of the cool ocean, he is a little cold from the chill water, but it feels good. His belly rumbles and Angus realizes that he is hungry. He sniffs the air and smells sandwiches and finds his way over to a picnic basket. It all smells so wonderful, but there is a new smell he doesn't recognize. Angus decides to take a bite. Ah, it's hot! Angus regrets taking a bite of the red food. Do you see what food that is? The hot pepper. The hot red pepper is not for dogs to eat. He no longer wants to be at the beach. He wants to go home and it is getting late. As Angus walks home, he enjoys the cool breeze. The sun is going down and everything around him is a violet color. He enjoys the pretty purple sky as he makes the long stroll home. 
Once in the house, Angus lays down on his favorite rug and falls asleep. He dreams about the adventure he had that day. He dreamt about all the things that made him feel warm. The warm yellow sunshine, the burning orange sand, the hot spicy red pepper. Angus dreams of all those beautiful warm and cool colors together and he dreams of the new adventure he will have tomorrow. I hope you can think of some things that you also know that make you feel cool and warm. Hi Falcons, today we are going to be creating a landscape. A landscape is a scene outdoors. We are going to take a look at this landscape real quick by Andrew Wyatt. And looking at the landscape, we can see that things in the foreground look much larger than things in the background. In real life, this woman is not bigger than the buildings, but it appears that way because she's closer up to us. Things that are closer to you are larger than things are that are far away at the distance. Excuse me, <laughs> I spoke wrong. But things that are far away appear to be much smaller. If I look at something across the room, it almost feels like I can fit it inside my hand. If you look on the wall behind me, the pictures of my daughter, I feel like I can pinch them between my fingers, but really we know it's much bigger. It's just farther away. So it appears that way. Looking at this, we see that that is how Andrew Wyeth painted this painting. We are going to be creating our own landscape scenes that we are going to, in our next lesson, be adding warm colors too because it's fall and fall colors, the reds, the orange, the yellow, those create a warm fall day kind of feeling. So what we're going to do is get our piece of paper and we are going to put our paper landscape wise. Not this way, we want our paper to go landscape wise because we are going to be creating an outdoor scene. You will also need a pencil with an eraser because we always start with that and a black Sharpie. So pause your video and go get your supplies. Welcome back. I am going to actually be using my black marker for my marker board, but I want you to start with pencil on your paper because that is the best way for you to get started. I would start that way too if I was using paper, but since I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, this is how I'm going to do it. Now I am going to start about three fourths of the way up, and I'm just gonna make a tiny little dot here for my frame of reference. And what we're going to do, we're going to make an arching coming from here all the way to the end. And then from the same spot, we're going to do the same thing going the other way. So we have, this is our horizon line. So above here is sky, and this is all of our land. From there, we're going to try to make it look like an outdoor harvest or fall scene. So we wanna try to make it kind of look like maybe we're on a farm. So to have it look like that field, we're just gonna take these lines and they're gonna get start right near the same point and move out and get wider and wider and wider. By doing that, it looks like this is the land, and the further away it is, those crop lines 
come to almost appear to come together, but really it's just the way they look in the distance. Now, far away, we are going to put a farmhouse. So we're gonna just make a small, not too big, rectangle back here. And in that rectangle, we can add the door, maybe that X that we often seen on a bar door, and a roof. So we're gonna kind of make that trapezoid where it's got a long bottom, the angle up like we're gonna make a triangle, but instead of doing that, we're gonna have that flat bottom top. We could add another window if we wanted to, your design. And next to it, I'm gonna create a little bit taller rectangle with a half circle on top and a door. That's gonna look like my silo where the barn food and stuff is stored for the animals. If you want to next to it, you can add a fence. And in the sky, we're going to put a sun. Now, a sun, a lot of times we think our suns look like this, but they don't really. They're really just more of a circle looking shape in the sky with some movement. If you want to add some clouds in your sky, that's all right. But looking, we can see that this is very far away. We are also going to add some pumpkins to our field because it's October. And the pumpkins that are close up are gonna be kind of large. We're gonna make that circle shape with our pumpkins and have that stem. But if I wanted to make a pumpkin far away, it would be much taller. Further away the pumpkins are, the tinier they are. So it looks like a field of pumpkins. We're going to add a bunch of pumpkins to our field. Remembering the further away they are, the tinier they get. So the pumpkins in the middle would kind of be medium size, and the pumpkins in the back would be larger. Now, I am going to add this, but you don't have to. If you'd like to add a scarecrow, that's always fun. We can add a scarecrow. Start by making a circle and maybe add a silly hat. Now, he's bigger because he's close up. Maybe add that pants on our scarecrow. It all obviously be on a stick. Our scarecrow would have straw coming out. And maybe a face on our scarecrow. Some patches because scarecrows are usually made out of scrap and old clothing. Looking at this, we can see how our scarecrow is close up, he's large. A scarecrow's really not bigger than a farmhouse. It just appears that way. After you have finished, your picture may look something like this. You will then take your black Sharpie marker and go over your lines, just like this. So you're gonna have something very similar to this when you are done. When you are done, we're going to safely put it aside somewhere till our next class, and then we are going to be taking out watercolors next class and using them, only our warm colors, to create. So I'll see you next time when we talk about how to paint using our warm colors.